Yo, Fidzy here, aka Gassin, and thank you for clicking on my review of One Piece Manga Chapter 988. This chapter, it was a little bit mixed for me. I'm not going to say I was, like, hating on it, but there were some bits that I really liked, and there were some bits that I just found disappointing, and a few little bits in there that I'm a little bit concerned about, all of which I'll get into in this review. Starting off at the beginning, which is, for me, the most disappointing part of this chapter because obviously in the last chapter two weeks ago at the end we thought or it looked like it was made to look like we were going to get Nekomamushi and Inanarashi Sulong forms with that last panel with Nekomamushi how it was just Nekomamushi's smile and it was all like blacked out it looked like Nekomamushi was like in the middle of transforming and that this chapter we were going to pull away and get that reveal as to what Nekomamushi looks like in his Sulong form and this chapter we did not get it Nekomamushi and Inanarashi were still as normal Nekomamushi and normal Inanarashi. We did get Sulong, but it just wasn't the two that I most wanted to see in Sulong. So I was a little bit disappointed at that, and we didn't even get any of the Nine Red Scabbards going up against Kaido, because Jack turns up as well, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But it was disappointing because we had those two weeks, and, you know, this is like... Just building up expectations too high and just hype getting in the way. But we had a two week break and in them two week breaks it was just made to look like we were going to get this stuff. So the fact that we didn't get it even at the end of the chapter and that we have another two week break is very disappointing. Let's talk about the beginning bit in a little bit more detail. Jack has turned up, he's on the roof now of Onigashima and that isn't necessarily a bad thing because even though... I would like to see Nekomamushi and Inarashi take on Kaido. What I really want to see, what one of my big wish lists for Wano was, was to see Nekomamushi and Inarashi turn into their Sulong forms and get their rematch versus Jack. Because the last time we saw them fight, it was pretty even, you know. The, the fight just kept going, it was stall, and then Jack, he busted out the poison. Cheated a little bit and defeated them. What I'd love to see here is them go into their Sulong forms take on Jack and completely destroy him. That would be very satisfying to watch and it would be good because it will show how much more powerful these characters are in their Sulong forms because we know that they are pretty even with Jack in their base forms. So that would be a good way of showing the power of Sulong and at what their power would be and then seeing them go against Kaido. But it doesn't even look like we might get that. I'm sure we will and I really hope that we do. But all of the other minks step in the way and Raizo steps in the way because he wants to, um, you know, pay his debt to Nekomushi and Inarashi for saving his life back in Zo. So they step in to take on Jack instead so that Nekomamushi and Inarashi, they can actually take on Kaido. So it's a bit mixed because, yeah, get to have that Nekomushi and Inarashi versus Kaido. But I really want to see them against Jack and I want to see them completely destroy Jack and just show how powerful their Sulong forms are. The minx that we see actually go Sulong. long. It was Rudy and BB and the Musketeers. They all go Sulong. long. It looked pretty cool. They looked pretty generic, to be honest. They all just looked like kind of big lion monsters, kind of like Peckham's, not as cool and elegant as Carrot looked. But I think this is going to be one of those scenes that is going to look much better when you see it in the anime. Jack also brought with him another number, our second number that we've seen so far in the manga. And... A second disappointment. I did not like his design. Another goofy design. So that's two numbers so far and two big thumbs down in terms of their design. Hoping that their transformed forms are going to be a lot more epic looking. And one final thing about Jack as well before we get onto my favourite part of this chapter. And that is that Jack, like I said, he's up now on the roof of Onigashima. But he got there awfully quickly. Like... We don't know how much time has passed. I'm assuming not a lot because the Minx are still standing in front of Kaido and they haven't actually started the fight. But what we saw was Kaido go into his dragon form and fly straight up to the top of Onigashima, which this is Kaido. He's a big dragon. That's not going to take him very long. All of the nine red scabbards grabbed on. And then all of a sudden Jack just pushes the door open. He's like, I'm here. It's like, hang on, you were downstairs with Kaido. You're a big, slow mammoth. How did you get up there so fast? He must have literally, you know, as the Nine Red Scabbards came in attacking Kaido, Jack must have been like some, some like Katakuri level future site and been like, right, I need to go to the ceiling. Let's go. We've got to try and get there before them and not quite making it. I hope that the anime kind of flashes this out. I'd love to have a scene of just Jack just 
standing in a lift, standing in an elevator on his way up with just like lift music playing and he's just like, Did you press the top floor? Ah! Okay. If you see the dog and the cat, they're mine. And then some like Onigashima maintenance worker gets in like before they reach the top and just stands there in front. Jack's behind fuming, the maintenance worker's just at the front, straight face. So Jack, he teleported up to the top of Onigashima, which leaves King and Queen down at the bottom. They are still by the crucifix that has Momonosuke on. And Shinobu is up there and once again proving that she is a terrible ninja because King notices her and King picks her up and throws her across the room. But then as he's doing that, all of a sudden, all of the chains on Momonosuke break. And we see Momonosuke, he starts floating in the middle of the air. And at first I was like, what is going on? Is this something to do with his devil fruit? Is he going to do bust out some like kind of hybrid form or something? But no, he's floating in the air. He's not actually floating. He's being carried by an invisible person who can fly. Yes, Sanji is back and he is in his raid suit. It doesn't actually, though, explain where Sanji has been. Even Nami is like, oh, Sanji, I thought you were, like, off looking for women. And he doesn't even answer. So that's still a bit of a mystery. I'm sure there is still a little bit of a story there. But Sanji, he gets Momonosuke and he throws Momonosuke to Shinobu, who's, also, who's already been thrown out. And then Sanji gives Momonosuke a thumbs up. And he's like, I heard your speech. I heard you declare your name. Good going, Momonosuke. Momonosuke did kind of let me down a little bit in this chapter because he was like, once again, moaning about being up too high and being like, I'm scared, I'm scared, even though he just stood up to Kaido. But that was a nice moment between Sanji and Momonosuke. And it's really good coming from Sanji because now from Whole Cake Island, we know that Sanji is a person who has had conflict with his own name and who he is. And Momo just like announced his name and who he is. So that was like a good little moment between the two. And then the best moment was what we got next. We got Sanji versus a Yonko commander. Sanji versus King actually happened. This was really unexpected and very, very exciting. I think a lot of people were expecting or hoping for King to be facing Zoro and to be Zoro's opponent. And then maybe Marco when Marco turns up. But for it to be Sanji, that is awesome. That was a big surprise. I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much because we have had a lot of fights start in Wano and also in the Whole Cake Island and not go anywhere. So I'm not sure yet if this is going to be a full fight or if it's just going to be this little bit that we've seen. You know, so far Sanji has fought page one and x straight, and both of them have been skipped and we haven't seen the outcomes on. So fingers crossed that this could finally be Sanji's fight after so many little fake outs. But it does leave a little bit of a mystery now as to who Zoro's opponent is going to be because if it's not King, then is it going to be Queen or is it going to be someone else? I originally always thought it was going to be Orochi, but Orochi is currently laying on the floor with his head cut off, even though I doubt he's dead. But he's probably now going to be a little bit more of an enemy of my enemy is my friend situation. So yeah, a bit of a mystery now as to who Zoro's opponent's going to be. And he is busy right now struggling with some gifters while Sanji is taking on a Yonko commander. And is he struggling? I don't know, it's made to look like he is a little bit, but I'm not sure. So what happens is King comes in and does a big peck on Sanji's chest and sends him flying back into a building. There's a big explosion, lots of rubble. Luffy looks over and he's a little bit shocked by like, oh my God, Sanji, but he hasn't seen Sanji in his raid suit. And there's a lot of dialogue between Sanji and King about how much damage King is going to do on Sanji like I, I'm not I'm not just gonna make a hole in your chest I'm gonna rip you in two and stuff like that so the fact that they're saying all of that and that it was a bit of a mystery because we don't see what happens after that impact when all of the rubble and the dust clears I don't think we're gonna be seeing a Sanji knocked out I think we're gonna see a Sanji still standing up not completely clean but you know probably like a little like hole in his raid suit and then like a tiny little bit of blood, probably some blood from the mouth, a chipped glass, a bit of hair sticking up. Even better if his abs were covered in armament hucky. But I fully expect Sanji to be standing up having taken the hit and wiping off the dust. I don't think the raid suit that only got debuted not long ago is already going to be wrecked. By the way, the raid suit, I couldn't see any changes on it. So I don't think Frankie and Usopp have managed to actually work on it yet. And also when the peck was going in, I couldn't see any blood, I couldn't see any damage on the raid suit, at least nothing that I noticed. So I think Sanji is going to be alright. What would be really epic is if 
King pulls back, Sanji gets up. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a hole, a tiny little bit of blood. And then we see a crack on King's beak. Doubt that's going to happen. Really doubt that's going to happen, but how epic would that be? That would really, really upset all of the Zoro fanboys. I'm pretty sure quite a lot of them are already getting a little bit upset that Sanji is already fighting a Yonko commander. Especially one that they thought Zoro was going to fight. So that was the Sanji stuff. A genuine surprise. My highlight of this chapter. Another genuine surprise is what happened next between Luffy and Yamato. Luffy says about going to help Momonosuke and then Yamato turns around and is like, yeah, I guess I should help him because he is my son. Now that's a little bit weird. Creep alarm! I know Yamato wants to be Odin and act like Odin, but I thought Yamato was acting like Odin because he doesn't know about Momonosuke and Kinemon. He didn't know about any of them, so he was acting like Odin because he thought that there was nobody else to have Odin's will and like take the place of Odin. But now he knows that they're there, so I thought maybe he'd start letting that go. But instead, what we get here is it seems like he actually does think that he's Odin by calling Momonosuke his son. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit confusing. It makes me feel like maybe at the end of this, when the war is over, Yamato probably shouldn't join the Straw Hats, probably shouldn't even join the Grand Fleet. I think Yamato needs to go and get some therapy. What I don't think we're going to get here is like an arc where Yamato kind of becomes like a foster father or a parent figure to Momonosuke. Momonosuke's whole thing is about him becoming like more independent and stepping up and stop at, you know being perceived as a child and stuff and being perceived as like a man as like Odin so what I think we're gonna be getting is we're gonna see Yamato more letting go of the Odin stuff like I mentioned a little bit ago and instead finding his own path and what he wants to do and, and finding his own personality and his own character I think that's what we're gonna get from Yamato I'm not really sure if we should even take what Yamato has said like literally as well you know you could put some theories out there that maybe like a bit of Odin's soul or Odin's will or spirit or something is inside of Yamato maybe we've seen some crazy stuff in One Piece already but I really don't want that to happen because I do not want in any way for Odin to come back alive even if like some kind of possessed thing and if, and if it is that then that opens up a whole can of like oh how many other people from the dead can come back if it's like that so yeah I, I don't want anything like that Odin please stay dead hey have you got any thoughts and theories about this chapter if so let me know down in the comments below because I would love to hear what you think about this chapter what do you think about Yamato what do you think about the big mum stuff that I'm about to talk about as well Nami does a surprising little feat in this chapter as well. Well, not really surprising because she is a cat burglar and she does some cat burgling here, which is great. It's great to see Nami going back to her thieving roots and she steals Zeus off of Big Mum. Proper stealth as well. It was like, how on earth did you get that? She's just holding Zeus in one of the panels. But Big Mum quickly gets Zeus back and basically gives Zeus a choice. Who are you going to pick? You're going to pick Big Mum. You're going to pick Nami. Zeus, even though he apologises to Nami, he picks Big Mum. And Nami is obviously devastated. She's like, you're no longer my friend. I hate you. So Zeus, poor thing, didn't have a choice. And I don't think he's going to be with Big Mum permanently. I'm pretty sure by the end of Wano, Nami is going to have Zeus. Zeus for Straw Hat. And potentially also Prometheus. I mean, Big Mum doesn't even get to keep uh, Zeus that long in this chapter either. Because another surprising little thing. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Brooke and Frankie come on the rhino bike and smack Big Mum in the mouth. Zeus gets cut in half once again by MVP Brooke. Brooke really adding to his resume on feats on Big Mum and interactions and annoyances for Big Mum. It was hilarious, it, but it was random, so random. Frankie's even like, did I, do, did I hit something as if they didn't even do it on purpose, which is weird because Brooke clearly cut Zeus in half on purpose. That was a little bit weird, but a great entrance for Frankie. A great way for Frankie to meet Big Mum and a great reintroduction to Brooke and another good Brooke interaction with Big Mum. Hopefully we get to see Brooke have another little go at Big Mum. But what I really don't hope, that bike, the Black Rhino, has hit Big Mum again in the face. Please, please, I was talking to a friend about this and it was like, no, 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 please. Big Mum, don't sit up and be like, who am I, where am I? Not again. No way. Don't, you, we're just getting in the fight. Don't have Big Mum switch. It'd be interesting, but I think it would only be interesting if Otama and 
Chopper are there because they've interacted, but nobody that Big Mum was like interacted with at that time, apart from Luffy, really briefly, are there. So I do not want, I do not want this again. I do not want a Big Mum without a memory. I want to see some formidable Big Mum. I want to see Big Mum fighting. Please don't, Oda. Please don't go the easy route and have Big Mum now become a passive ally for a little bit, which will allow the ally forces to kind of regroup a little bit. Let's actually continue the fight with Big Mum. I'd much rather see Big Mum get up angry and see her having a fight with Frankie and Brooke and Nami and Carrot. That would be really awesome. I still really want the Sanji, Whole Cake Island crew to go up against Big Mum, but this could be the start of it with Frankie there as well. So I think that pretty much covers everything that I want to talk about with this chapter. As I said, it's a pretty surprising chapter in the second half. A lot of big surprises, you know, the Sanji and King stuff. The big mum getting smacked in the face by Frankie and Brooke and the Nami getting Zeus back really stealthily. So lots of big surprises. But the beginning bit was really disappointing. That hype build up of Nekomushi and Inarashi going so long and not getting it at all in the chapter. I was convinced that when we didn't get it at the beginning, we were going to get it at the end. But it ended with Frankie delivering a great line saying, hey, does somebody have a runny nose? And Nami calling Frankie big bro. That's really nice to see among the straw hats, that kind of relationship there. I hope now, I wanna hear, I wanna hear Nami calling Robin big sis, and then that's a little bit more, a little bit more Frankie Robin shipping. So we got another break now, and the fact that we didn't get that hype of the big, of the Inarashi Nekomamushi and the Kaido fight, the fact that we didn't get that in this chapter makes me look at a lot of those big surprising stuff that we got in this chapter, especially the stuff with King and Sanji. And now my enthusiasm isn't as there as much going into this next break because now I'm thinking, OK, well, I got disappointed this time. When we get to the next one, I'm expecting to see Sanji now fighting King. But is it going to cut away? Is Sanji going to be gone again? And is King going to be fighting someone else? Maybe Zoro comes in and is like, oh, that's my fight. Yeah, it's, my, my expectations now are a little bit lowered. I, I'm now being a little bit more passive with my hype coming up in the next few chapters. Just got to take it as it comes. This chapter was called Sorry for the Wait. Was this Oda apologising to us? Sorry for the wait, but you got to wait for Nekomamushi and Inarashi to go so long a little bit longer. So overall, while there was some good stuff and some great stuff for Sanji fans, I think I'm only going to give this chapter a purple tier and I'm Mainly as well because I am a little bit concerned now about Big Mum. Please do not say, who am I? Hey, so thanks for watching. What did you think? Let me know about it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, maybe give it a like. And if you really liked it, why not subscribe? You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Twitch. Oh, and here's a related video you might enjoy and something more fresh. I've been Higassin and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!